ESPN Plus Originals. It's a gorgeous Wednesday morning in Kirkland, Washington. A perfect day to wrap up pool play in the Junior League Softball World Series. And we begin with two teams jockeying for positioning at the top of Pool A. The Central Region Champions from Hudsonville, Michigan, and the Asia Pacific Region Champions from the Philippines. Great to have you with us here on a fantastic Wednesday morning in the Pacific Northwest. I'm Troy Clarity. Great to have you with us. This should be a lot of fun between two teams who have both played very well to this point in the tournament. A bit more beginning with the Central Region Champions from Michigan. They won this whole tournament last year, but they have played very well to this week, thanks in large part to one of their team leaders and one of their big time captains and one of their big time players. Callie Knopper, who just keeps coming through. Let's spotlight what she has done in the circle. Against Canada on Sunday, she did particularly well. Going to complete the game shout, not allowing Canada a lot striking out five along the way. And going to complete game shut up. Also got a two-run single as well. So Callie Knopper just keeps running on coming through and getting the job done. Along. Beautiful day, 71 degrees as we are set to begin things here at the 2023 Junior League Softball World Series for day number four. And the Michigan batting order looks like this. Pay particular attention to the heart of the line of the three, four, five batters. Cameron Sankus with a home run against Florida. Callie Knobbers batting 556 with eight driven in in the tournament. And Kenneth Behrman is hitting 500 this week. So Michigan very strong, one through 12. Erica Arnaiz is pitching, and she will start this game in the circle. So a late switch by the Philippines. And why not? Arnaiz, 13 in the third innings we've so far this week, has held 29 strikeouts. And just a one earned run. She's been charged with five runs total, but four of them unearned. She rears back, deals the heat. She is lethal for the Philippines and Michigan. Away we go. Enjoy the game. And it begins with Michaela Bradfield. Strike. Count goes to nothing and two on Bradfield. Who calls playing Little League a fun type of pressure. A oh, fun type of pressure being applied on both of these teams here today, I believe. The 0 2. Swing and miss. One around. Strike three. Well, yesterday against Canada. Arnaiz with a two strike count more often than not went higher and threw balls up in the strike zone on the rise balls and Canada just just couldn't lay off of them for the most part. Swing and a miss by Kylie Fox for strike one. Michigan beating Canada 5-0 on Sunday. 
dropping an extra inning decision, nine to eight in nine innings against Florida on Monday. And as they were ahead seven to one after three. Florida able to come back and win that one in extras, and then Michigan bounced back with a 10 nothing run rule win in five innings over Washington yesterday. They were up six nothing after one. Swing and a miss. Erica Arnaiz has dealt nothing but strikes to this point. Two gun. And she went with the high heat here again with two strikes. There it is. And the box goes down swinging. Cameron Stankus hit a first inning home run against Florida a couple days ago. Fouls off the first pitch that she sees. Cameron's favorite sports team, the University of Georgia. Their football team's kind of decent, I'm told. The 0-1. No balls and two strikes on Cameron Stankus. It's fouled back. A look at the Philippines defensively. As Arnaiz is ready with the 0-2. Yeah. is fighting him off. Her third foul off of this at bat. Arnaiz, her nickname is KK. She's dealt nothing but K's so far in this game. Too high, one and two. That is the first ball that she has thrown. And it comes three batters in. After striking out the first two batters on three pitches. A piece, the one, two. Fouled off again. And out of play. Audrey Sarsona and Nice Labrito at third and short, respectively. Made a couple steps over there to see if they might be able to get there in time. Umpires for this one, Johannes von Renswitty behind the plate. Along with Gareth Gilson. Thomas Gutierrez and Nico Davis. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Three up, three down, and three strikeout swinging. Erica Arnaiz already locked in. Three strikeouts. Bradford can't hold up. Fox goes around. And Stinkus goes down as well. In the top Bunnan half of the, the first, so Philippines seeing what it can do to get things going here at the plate in this one. A critical matchup between two teams at and or near the top of Pool A. Asia Pacific undefeated to this point. Winners over Florida, 4-1 final there. Over at Washington, 19-0 the outcome there. And 7-4 over Canada yesterday. They've scored plenty of runs. But pitching has been the name of the game for the Philippines to this point. Don't forget their, their batting line will be there. It has been very lethal so far this week. Starting with Fraulein Manalo, who's hitting 750 with four driven in so far this week. First pitcher, Cali Nabra. He's in there for a called strike one. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Nauber, the complete game shutout against Canada. Back on Sunday. Avanalo down 0-2 in the count. Fouled off. Behind and to our left. Bago City Little League. Bago City's about a 90-minute flight south of Manila. Just got a piece of it. Count stays at 0-2. Furline Manalo at the plate, her favorite food, fried chicken. That is never a bad way to go. The 0-2. In the air, fouled off. We're at field number two here at Everest Park. Things will get going at field one in about 20 minutes or so between Texas and Arizona. The 0-2. Reaches out on a couple of bounces. The throw the first from Michaela Bradfield. One gun. Now batting the right fielder. Brings up Number Christine, seven, Christine Jane, Jane Caracas. Caracas. Caracas born on Christmas Day. Facing Callie Nomber, working quickly. Goes upstairs, 2-0. Here's a bit more on Caracas. Says, if you can dream it, do it. I like that. That's low for ball three. Strike one call. Nauber with the complete game shutout against Canada came in in relief against Florida, but ended up getting the loss that day. Ball four to Caracas. And that game, Michigan was appearingly in, I mean, in full now. command. They're up 7 First 1 after three innings, but then Florida Anna. started to chip away. They tied it in the sixth. And then finally walked it off in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Diana Buenafe is the batter. And Diana is looking forward to winning this tournament. Well, still some work to do, but based on what we've seen so far, to this point anyway, it's, it's hard to argue that the Philippines might be in good position to be doing big things in this tournament. They won this team, this tournament, they check out, they won third place in this tournament last year. Scoots away from Behrman. And Baraka scoots to second base. So you're looking right now at two of the top three finishers from last year's Junior League Softball World Series. The 2-1. Yeah! Yeah, that one is a blooper that gets down in center field. She's coming around third. She is. She hasn't touched home plate yet, but a collision. And trying to gather herself and with a little help from our eyes, Caracas touches the bag. But let's make sure everyone's okay here. That was a hard collision between Caracas and Behrman at home. Caracas on her feet, making sure McKenna's okay. As we take another look. Weeping up high. And Behrman catching Caracas, the upper body. And our eyes realizing the situation. And Behrman may have needed a, a bit of a moment as well. I know they actually called her out. 
because Arnais moved her foot. So Caracas is out at the plate. So on one hand, you want to congratulate Arnais for being heads up and realizing the situation, the but that's not something that she can help with. Arnais at the plate right now. Foul back, one and one. Let's take another look at it. Behrman tried to sky high. While Caracas went low, she had not touched the plate to this point. And then you see Erica rush in and place her foot on the plate. Can't quite do that. Fouled off, Kent remains at one and two. Well, not play the runner at third. Pacific region champions, the manager of Francis Fuentes, the coach is Leo Deat, and Sarah Caracas. The 2 2. Hit sharply to the left, base hit, and going all the way to the fence. Now the Philippines take a 1 0 lead. Arnais drives him in. Opposite field, dropping it down, and an easy run scored for Andiana Buenafe. Coming to the plate now, big catcher number 19, Mary Antoinette Sicapore. So Mary Antoinette Sicapore steps up for Asia Pacific. Pitch up high for ball one. Philippines wasting a little time here. Off the end of the bat, drops down, the throw to first, bounces wide. Another run comes across. Arnai scores, and now it's 2 0. A good look at it here as that throw rushed by Bradfield. Barron's trying to track it down, but way too late to try to get Arnaz. Brings up Nice Labrito. For Asia Pacific, the shortstop number 17, Nice Labrito. Nice enjoys playing on the road. Getting out a little bit, playing away from Bago City. Well, it's almost 6,800 miles in a straight line from Bago City in the Philippines to Kirkland, Washington. So this is probably about as far away as you can get. Swing and a miss on the last pitch. That had a bit of spin to it. Out of play. Two nothing in the bottom of the first. Now the count full. The burrito staying alive. Swing and miss, strike three. Side retired, but two in for the Philippines. Two runs on three hits and one runner left on base for Asia Pacific in the. 
The Asia Pacific region champs able to bring two across in the bottom of the first inning. So it's a two nothing lead for the Philippines as we begin the second. The Philippines, as mentioned, took third in this tournament last year. This team from Bago City. In the Philippines, seven of those players were on last year's squad. Seven of these players were on last year's squad, I should say. The team that won it all, you're looking at them. The blue uniforms, Hudsonville, Georgetown, Little League. From Southwestern Michigan, that's Callie Nauber. Takes one up high for ball one. Michigan knocking off South Carolina in last year's final. Now the count evens out one ball and one strike. Michigan seeking to become the third team to repeat as Junior League Softball World Series champs. The team from Malnabo, Puerto Rico was the last to do it in 2009 and 2010. Swing and a miss on the rise ball, one and two. Naples, Florida also did it in 2000 and 2001. So it's been a relatively rare occurrence. Michigan certainly with that chance to do just that. The one, two. Got her again, swing and a miss. Four batters faced, four strikeouts swinging. Arnaz going up in the zone. That pitch has been lethal. Now batting the catcher, number 17, McKenna. Gets not for swinging here. McKenna Behrman. Fly ball, center field. Manalo back off the tip of her glove. And Behrman is in with the stand up double. Well, McKenna Behrman hitting 500 entering at this game for the tournament. And she'll add on to that number. And that was struck well. Hard hit balls have been few and far between when that young lady's been in the circle. Now Leah Veenstra will try to keep it going. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Too high. Feinstra keeps her bat on the shoulder. Leah's favorite TV channel is HGTV. I gotta admit, House Hunters is pretty entertaining. One ball, one strike. Now one and two. ties her shoe. Got to take care of the parts that take care of you. Gives everyone a thumbs up and she is ready to roll. Shoes are tied. Shades are on. She's ready to rock. What's she going to do here on a two strike count to Veenstra? Two and two. Veenstra hit her first ever over the fence home run during the regional tournament, which Michigan swept through. They did have a close call against Kentucky, but no real other problems outside of that. Coming in, it bounces and takes a funny hop away from Buenafe. Which probably, in all honesty, was good news for the Philippines because that might have been a tough play for Buenafe to try to, to try to complete with Francis Fuentes coming in to cover first base. Two and two. Three and two. Our 
Aaron Eyes has walked just three so far this week versus 33 strikeouts. How's that for a strikeout to walk ratio? Payoff pitch. High. Ball four. Two on for Michigan. Now batting the left fielder, number 22. Josie, Josie McDuffie. McDuffie. In play to third, Sarsona steps on the bag for one, and that's all she gets. So two away. Looks like Sean Veenstra wants the umpires to perhaps take another look. Ball's gonna stand. So that was an umpire's review. Now batting and we go back Central. to play with Mariah right Van Overloop well, coming Overloop. to the plate. So two on and two out and strike one to Van Overloop. Her favorite website is YouTube, but she likes watching YouTube to check out all the softball clips that are on that website. That's high, one and one. Well, I also had a couple of cousins who played in the Little League World Series not too long ago. Swing and a strike two. Of course, they're getting ready for things in Williamsport later on this month. Greenville is just around the corner, the Little League Softball World Series. Uh, big things happening around that event. One, two. In there, called strike three. And Erica Arnaiz has struck out five in two innings of work. Now you see it. No runs, no now hits. you don't. Two runners left on base. Philippines coming back. Central at the top of the second. Go to the bottom of the second. Between Michigan and the Philippines. Bottom of the second. The Philippines leading 2 nothing. <laughs> Defensive changes for Michigan. Kylie Fox moving from short to third. And Ainsley Tomaszewski replacing Fox at short. This is certainly something that Sean Veenstra, the, the manager of the Michigan team, is, is not afraid to do, making multiple defensive changes from inning to inning and across various positions as well. So if you're Scoring this game at home, be warned. Francine Fuentes looks at strike one from Cali Nauber. Fuentes known as the team leader. Swings and misses, nothing in two. Back-to-back K's for Cali Knopf. So Knobber trying to match Arnai's pitch for pitch. And strikeout for strikeout. Oh, fist pump along the way. Audrey Sarsona. Thought about it for a second, but takes the first pitch high for ball one. Audrey in the tournament last year hit 500. Five for 10, drove in three and scored three times. Heading towards 
short. Oh, it's grabbed by Thomas Sheff. Fans in the outfield, please do not sit on the scaffolding. Fans in the outfield, please do not sit on the scaffolding. Breach the nine spot in the Philippines order. There are 11 batters the for the Asia Pacific Region off Champions. Of the scaffolding. Daniela Bejos stepping up to the plate. Just misses maybe just a touch high for ball one to Bejos. That is the left fielder, number six, Daniela Bejos. Daniela puts a coin in her pocket before games. Swings and misses, one and one. Nobber working quickly. As Bejos down one, two. <laughs> Bejos fighting that one off. They are underway at field number one between West and Southwest, Arizona and Texas, respectively. down low for ball two. Pool A, there is potential for chaos. Pool B, not so much. The East Region champs from Connecticut have the top spot sewn up in that pool. The 2-2. Count full to Bayhouse. Even if Texas wins today and if Connecticut loses to Mexico, Connecticut wins that tiebreak. Czech Republic, their pool play portion is done. They finish there two and two. And Mexico cannot advance to the quarterfinal round, no matter what happens here today. Mexico 0 and 3, Arizona 1 and 2. That's down low for ball four. And because Arizona beat Mexico in the very first game of this tournament, Arizona would win all tiebreakers. Should those two teams have an identical pool play record, so there's nothing that Mexico can do to advance in the quarters. Meanwhile, here's Cassandra Sumatra. Sumatra drove in three against Canada yesterday. Part of a 7-4 win for the Philippines. Fly ball, center field, can't track it down. Lands beyond Stankus's reach. Sumatra has been seeing the ball well of late. And this one ends up being a double. Well hit. Bejos moving right away. And Bejos not stopping until she crosses home plate. So 3-0 the Philippines with Isel Tanaman swinging and missing. Tanaman's driven in five so far this week. So the bottom of the order for the Philippines has been productive. One and two to Tanaman. Isel's dream job, flight attendant. Didn't miss by much. Count goes to two and two. Tanaman's name was on the lineup card as a pitcher for today, but a late scratch there. She's still hitting as she puts this one to shallow left, and it goes over McDuffie's head. Sumatra races in and scores. Four nothing. Time called as Nobber sits at the, the top of the circle. Meanwhile, that ball hit high in the air towards McDuffie and left. It was almost out number three, but maybe just took her eye off it at the very last instant. 
stay within striking distance of the Philippines, especially the way Eric Arnaiz has been pitching at the start of this one. Back to the top of the order we go. Froline Manalo. Batting from the left side, grounded out to second to begin the game for the Philippines in the bottom half of the first. Ball one low. Fouled off one and one. Count goes to one and two. Gorgeous morning, 71 degrees at first pitch in Kirkland, Washington. Should end up in the lower 80s by the time it's all said and done today. But one, two. Change goes high, two and two. Weather has not been a factor at all this week from a temperature standpoint. The two, two. Bites it off. And heading towards the, the walking path that separates field number two and the field that's used as a practice field for teams that are getting ready for their games later on today. The 2 2. Let me do it again. Look from behind home plate. Heads up. Oh! Count full to Manalo. Looks like we're still okay with that shot, though. That's good news. Fouled off. Once again. So no equipment was harmed during that last foul off. Three balls, two strikes. Change up, hit right to second, and the throw to first, and time for the out. Philippine tacks on two more, and they lead 4-0 after two. A lot of times... Two in the first, two more in the second for the Asia Pacific region champions from the Philippines. 4-0 with two innings in the book. Kirkland, Washington. Great to have you with us here on ESPN Plus. Troy Clarity here. A look at the standings as of right now. If this result holds, then the Philippines will go undefeated through pool play. If not, if Michigan comes back to win and if Florida beats Washington, you're going to have a three-way tie at three and one, which each of those respective teams have a to one other. So the tiebreaker used after that runs given up divided by 28 innings. As Kalen Barron looks at the first pitch well outside from Arnais for ball one. So if Michigan comes back and wins and if Florida beats Washington, there's going to be some math involved. As far as figuring out who wins pool A and, in all likelihood, who takes spots number two and three as well. Swing and a miss on the rise ball, one and two. Galen Barron's wearing a, it's a big Florida State softball fan. And time called. And Arnaiz needs to tie her shoe once again. Barron's was on this team last year, along with Callie Knobber and, and Kylie Fox. Those three young ladies know what it's like to be here. And even better, they know what it's like to, to win it all here. Swing and a miss, strike three. Six strikeouts for Arnaiz. 
typical day at the office for her so now far. Batting. She's got 35 strikeouts this week. Number nine, Ainsley Tomaszewski. Ainsley Tomaszewski. Foul back, nothing in one. Ainsley says if she won the lottery, she'd buy Taylor Swift tickets. Yeah, those, those can't be cheap. Folks around here found that out a couple weekends ago. As Taylor was playing at Lumen Field a couple shows there. Just across the lake in Seattle. The fans made such a commotion that it actually registered on the Richter scale. No joke, a 2.3. We're gonna miss one and two. Now, for reference, some of you might be familiar with the Beast Quake, what they call here in the Pacific Northwest, former Seahawks running back Marshawn Lynch, the big run he had in the playoffs against the Saints, and the Seahawks fans also caused so much noise it registered on the Richter scale. That was a 2.0. Oh, Erica Arnaiz registering a seismic performance to this point, seventh strikeout of the day through two and two thirds innings pitched. It's that high cheese once again. Jaden Westra. Sweet miss on the rise ball strike one. Number 16, Jaden Westra. Jaden's favorite actor, The Rock. She also says that her special talent is her work ethic. Know how I can tell she's a coach's kid? No balls and two strikes. Jaden's dad, Jeffrey, a coach on this team. James Dankus, also a coach. Sean Beans for the manager. The 2 This time, Jaden lays off of the high stuff. And a two strike count. It gets her again. Four consecutive strikeouts for Erica Arnai. Is on fire. Three up, three down. 4 nothing. the Philippines in the lead, and Erica Arnaiz in full control. The two, three, four batters due up for Asia Pacific. Bottom of the third, Philippines leading at 4 nothing. up, drifting into foul ground, and Barons, check that, that's Leah Veenstra, who is back in the game, and just announced as a defensive replacement, Veenstra has re-entered the game defensively, she is now at first replacing Kaylin Barons, and Josie Wolford is in right field, replacing Mariah Van Overloop. Meanwhile, Jaden Westra, now batting first base number 16 on Diana. Is in left field. <laughs> on a couple of hops, the throw gets there. Michaela Bradfield had a bit of a ways to go. He was able to get the throw there in time. So very quickly, two outs. Now the pitcher, number 24, Erica Arnaiz. Philippines did score both of their runs in the second inning with two out. So clearly the work not done. Erica Arnaiz with an RBI double. Later came around to score in the first inning. Bago City in the Philippines called the boxing capital of the Philippines. Foul territory, but no one can get there. Box, Tomaszewski giving chase.
out of play. The count goes to one and two. American troops actually introduced softball in the Philippines. It was initially called indoor baseball and was formally introduced in local public schools back in 1911. Meanwhile, Kali Nabu introduces Eric Arnai to the strikeout column. Three innings in the book. Philippines ahead for now. Yeah. Hope you're having a lot of fun with us. We certainly are here on ESP Plus. Troy Clarity taking you through this one. The Jumping Softball Series final day of pool play. It's all about positioning for the elimination bracket, which begins play tomorrow afternoon. Leading off of the that top point of the on, fourth, the right fielder number Will 13, everyone down, Josie eight of the ten teams make the bracket. And from there, eight becomes four, and then four becomes two, and then two becomes one that hoists the championship. Over on field one, Texas has just scored the Southwest Region champions. They took a one-nothing lead over the West Region champs. One nothing that game in the bottom of the second inning. So Texas, as you look at that highlight on the right side of your screen, Texas with a two and one pool record. The West at one and two. So the West would love to try to draw level. And that would in some ways force a three-way tie. It would force a three-way tie with two and two in the middle of that pool bracket. Between Texas. Arizona and the Czech Republic. Swing and miss one and two. Josie Wolford the batter. Josie's grandpa played in the regional baseball tournament 50 years ago, and he still tells stories about it to this day. I wonder what Josie will be telling folks stories about about this tournament 50 years from now. Memories that. That lasted a lifetime. Two balls, two strikes. There's just outside. Three and two. It off. Erica Arnais in the circle for the Philippines has struck out eight Michigan batters, including the last four. And all of them swinging. Doesn't get Wolf from here. Walks the last order, last batter in the order. So Michaela Bradfield comes to the plate at the top of the Michigan order. Bradfield, the first of three consecutive strikeouts to start Arnaiz's day. Lays down the bunt before the first. In time for the out. And scampering back to second, Wolford is safe there. So Wolford moves over. Kylie Fox, her nickname the race car. High for ball one. James Stankus, one of the, the coaches for, for Michigan, calls Kylie a fun loving troublemaker. A 1 0. Swinging this 1 and 1 on the rise ball. Kylie struck out in the first, hoping for better results this time around. Strike two call. Got her 
There again, swing and a miss. Boxes now struck out twice. Not an instant replay, folks. Certainly not from Fox's plate appearance in the first inning. Cameron Stankus to the plate with two out and a high strike call. Popped up. Out to the left field. And the catch made by Daniela Bejos. And the side is retired. Michigan gets one on, but they leave her there. No runs, no hits. What's up? We're doing YMCA here at Everest Park in Kirkland. Philippines leading Michigan 4 0, bottom of the fourth. Want your child to experience the teamwork and fun of Little League baseball or softball? Visit playlittleleague.org and enter your address to find a Little League community program near you. Never a bad thing when a dance party breaks out on the softball field. That's, that's prone to happen in this sport. And a couple members of the team from Canada yesterday in their game against the Philippines and a couple of young ladies got on base one on first and the other on second and there was a delay in the game and and those two just just sat at their respective bases and, and played rock paper scissors but right now for Michigan positive affirmations in with the good air out with the bad and no matter what play with the smile Four nothing, the Philippines leading Michigan. Trademarks of this Michigan team is their numerous defensive changes. We'll get you those as we go. First count on her deals a first pitch strike number 19, to Mary Antoinette Sikapur. Okay, at third, Leah Beenstra has re-entered the game, replacing Kylie Fox, who has moved from third to short. Fox going back. Ainsley Tomaszewski, the new second baseman, makes the grab. So there is now one away. Kaylin Barons is now at first. Josie McDuffie is back in left field. Mariah Van Overloop is back, but now playing center. And Josie Wolford is in right field. Past Veenstra. Fair ball. And nice Labrido gets on board. So we have seen changes everywhere for Michigan defensively along the way, except in the battery. Can the Bearman still behind the plate? And Kelly Nahum still in the circle. Number 12, Francine Fuentes. Francine Fuentes struck out to lead off the second. So his bunt goes around. So some new faces in some different places defensively for Michigan. This is what they do. It's a fly ball to left field. Who has it? Nobody does. And Burrito scampers into second. Well, neither McDuffie, nor Fox, nor Van Overloop seem to have a true beat on the ball. Maybe assuming that one of the other two had a better track on it. But nobody had it. So it falls in center field. Audrey Sarsona. Sarsona popped up to short in the second, but overall, she's still having a good tournament at the plate. Five for 10 with a couple driven in. 
give Fuentes the, the single on the last play. So two on and one out. Fouled off, count goes to two and one. Reaches out, puts that one down in center field. Coming around third, and in with the run. Nice Labrido comes all the way around from second. Gives the Philippines a 5 nothing lead. Third RBI of the tournament for that young lady, Audrey Sarsona. Fans rooting on the Coming Philippines. Right now, Starting to make series, some noise. Softball girls, left fielder number six, Daniela Bejos. Daniela Bejos trying to give them something even more to cheer about. Bejos walked and scored in the second. With two in scoring position. Drops it down. And now the bases are loaded. I could have sworn I heard somebody say foul. Take a look at this ourselves. You know, it stays fair the whole way, and then Veenstra couldn't get a grip on it. Swing and miss by Cassandra Sumatra. Sumatra with an RBI double in the second. Single, 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 and an E5. But the base is juiced. Sumatra tries to go up and get that one. Instead, waves at it. The 0-2. The base is loaded and one out. A lot of things potentially hanging in the balance during this sequence. Foul ball. Fuentes, Sarsona, and Bejos on the base pass for the Philippines. And the count goes to one and two on Sumatra. Two and two. Nowhere to put Sumatra. Balls, two strikes. In the air to short. Grabbed by Fox. And a big out for Michigan. Setting the plate now for Asia Pacific number 14, Isel Tanaman. Isel Tanaman reached on an error in the second. And puts this one in the air. The Fox again coming down, makes the catch, and retires the side. Philippines brings one in, but they leave him loaded. They're ahead 5 nothing. What's up at DQ? These two are debating which $7 meal deal, with fries, drink, and a sundae, is the best full-size meal deal of all. 
cheeseburger. Chicken strips. There's something for everyone in the $7 meal deal at DQ. Happy tastes good. Businesses need 5G solutions today. That's why they choose T-Mobile for business. MLB partners with T-Mobile to not community heroes. Our thanks as always and once again to the Kirkland community for putting on this event. It's Kelly Knobber leading off for Michigan here. One around. Knobber struck out to lead off the second inning. No balls and one strike. That one's high, one and one. It was obviously tough to not be able to play this event in 2020 or in 2021 due to the pandemic. But man, was it great to have it back and to, to be back here in Kirkland last year. One and two. Tie two and two. You've got the Junior League Softball World Series here in Kirkland, Washington. The only other Little League World Series event on, the, on this side of the planet, anyway, is the Intermediate World Series in Livermore, California, on the baseball side. Livermore just outside of the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. Foul back two and two. It's actually about 30 miles from my front door, where I live. Certainly glad to be up here in Kirkland. It gets rather hot in Livermore, especially this time of year. Two and two. Just misses. has walked two so far today. Make it three. Well, and patience from Nob down early in the count. But fighting off a couple of pitches. Number 17, Maybe one or two that were Barman. on the borderline, but Nobber hangs in there. Persistence pays off. She's on board. And this one's hit high to left field. Back and at the base of the fence. The first base hit of the day for Michigan. Behrman gets the double. And Michigan will try to get on the board. Boy, you can just hear that contact. <laughs> what a great sound. And if you're rooting for Michigan, that's a... That's a great sight. As Leah Veenstra steps to the plate, Veenstra walked in the second inning. She'll be facing the 1 0 from Arnais. High strike called 1 and 1. Well, and initially, Behrman, I put down as a double for her in the second inning, as it was a fly ball to center. Hit deep to center. That Manalo had the ball skip off of her glove. I initially had that as a double, but it was ruled an E8. So that is a true double by Behrman. The first base hit of the game for Michigan. As you look at some of Leah Vistra's information. Two balls and one strike. Now two and two. Hey, 
Arnaz with only one earned run allowed so far this week. Third, upper right corner of your screen, McKenna Behrman at second, and nobody out. That's high. And that is ball three, that's what I thought. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Hate when that happens. That was a 2 2 pitch. But with, with base runners hard to come by when Arnais is in the circle, I can, I, I can understand why you might be a, a bit ready to, to try to take first base. But as it is, it's a full count to Veenstra. take first base. Now batting the left walk, field double walk. Two, Josie McDuffie. And that is how Michigan has loaded the bases with nobody out. And here's Josie McDuffie. McDuffie hit a home run in the top of the seventh against Indiana to seal the regional championship game. Might have been thinking about that on that swing. <laughs> McDuffie down in the count 0-2. Rare occurrence this week. Base is loaded against Arnais. No balls, two strikes. Fly ball, heading to the left, giving chase. The snow cone grabbed by Bejos. One away. How about that? Boy, how much ground did Daniela Bejos cover on this one? Coming in from Baffle. That's a town of a few miles north of here. Wow. So one gun, base is still loaded for Mariah Van Overloop. Swings and misses at the rise ball. Nothing in one. Van Overloop struck out to end the second. Arnais has struck out nine. Double play, double play. Nothing in two. That's in there. Got her looking. Big strikeout. Number 10 for R9. Right now, struck out 14 yesterday against Canada. 12 of those strikeouts were swinging. The other two were pitches that were lower in the strike zone, more towards the knees. The other 12 were high in the zone. A similar pattern forming here. 10 strikeouts for Arnais, nine swinging. And all high in the zone, all of those high in the zone, the one looking at the knees. With 39 strikeouts overall for Arnais this week. And 16 innings of work. Barons facing the 1-1. 
Now the count one and two. Bases were loaded with nobody out. Darn eyes about to work her way out of this one. Two and two. To the double. Our nice strikes back gets help from her left fielder Bayhouse making a terrific grab. Gets on over Luke Luka and then Barrett swinging. Philippines ahead by nine. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning and you get the feeling that that sequence with Michigan loading up the bases, coaxing a couple of walks from our nice, getting a big double from Behrman, and loading the bases with nobody out. Coming away empty, you get the feeling that that sequence will loom very, very large in the outcome of this game. Back to the top of the order we go. Furline Manalo has grounded out to second twice. Fox loses the handle. So Manalo is aboard. Into the batter's box, the right fielder, number seven, Christine Jane Caracas. Some defensive changes for Michigan among them. Jaden Westra back in the game in right. That's up high for ball one. Christine Jane Caracas, the batter, walked in the first and was called out at the plate on a somewhat bizarre play as Caracas was trying to come around to score on a base hit by and Diana Buenafe. She came around to score. The throw came in high. Behrman had to leap up to get it. And there was a collision at home plate. Caracas had her foot out, had her leg outstretched, but her foot wasn't touching the plate. And Erica Arnais, who was in the on-deck circle, came over and put Christine's foot on the plate. You can't do that. So Caracas called out at the plate. Everyone was okay as, as Behrman's now up and hopping around as that one may have been fouled off of her foot. But what a bonkers sequence that was. The 2-2. Two -two. Now 3-2. and two. <laughs> Fouled off. Cameron Stankus has returned to the game. She's back in center field. Michaela Bradfield is back at second. Count remains at three and two. I hear cheering from the other field between Texas and Arizona. In fact, the West Region champs have hit a home run. Caracas walks on the payoff pitch. So Texas still leads, but now that advantage has been cut to 3-2 in the top of the fourth inning. The young ladies from Tucson, Arizona versus the squad from Sealy, Texas. Not sure exactly. I know Sealy is west of Houston. I'm not sure exactly which highways go through there, but it sounds like if you Hit up I-10 from Tucson, 
you'll roll through Sealy eventually. Head if you head east. High strike call to Bonafo. Bonafo singled and scored in the first. First and second, nobody out. The bunt dropped down. Nobber scrambles. The throw gets to first. And then Barons chases everyone back and makes sure the to give Nobber the ball as soon as she can. America, but everybody else moves up. And the Philippines have two in scoring position. Popped up, shallow left, Box can't get there. And the Philippines lead 6-0. Just placed very softly, Arnaiz helping her own cause. She's driven in a couple today, this time on the RBI single. I'd be smiling too if I was having the kind of day she's having. Box going back. Stank is coming in from center. And just put in a spot where nobody could get to. And Arnaiz hanging out at second, doing a little dance. Now stretching out, staying loose. Smiling a little bit, and why not? She's had help, to be sure. As certainly, offensively, it's been a team effort as usual for the Philippines. And <laughs> a monster play by Daniela Bejos, the left fielder. But Arnaiz taking center stage here. Kaylin Barnes is in the circle for Michigan. More on her in a moment. You know, every summer, for as long as I can remember, I've been coming up here to skip. You see, it's so thin and crispy, it's not just perfect for eating. It's also perfect for skipping. Mm. Whoa. You know, every summer, for as long as I can remember, slices of thin crust pizza just fly out of the lake. Like a miracle. I got one! Me too! The lake giveth thin crust! It's a hot and ready thin crust summer at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. Back to action here with Kaylin Barons in the circle, facing off against Mary Antoinette Sikapur. Fouls off the first pitch she sees from Barons. Barons, according to the coaches for Michigan, throws with good velocity and spin. You certainly see the velocity on that pitch. And she's got a bit of work to do. With runners at second and third, there is one out. The Philippines have already pushed one across. That one skips all the way to the backstop, but not far enough away for anyone to think about advancing on the base paths. Whoa! Low again. Caracas at third, and Arnaiz at second. <laughs> Opposite field, it gets down, and he'll score at least one. Two come across. Singapore reaches up and puts it out in the right center field. And the Philippines score twice more. That's a nice swing by Mary Antoinette. Eight nothing for the Philippines. But the runner at second. Fair ball. Singapore scampers back to third. 
Now batting second base, the number 12, at second Francine. and third. Quinten. And that runner at second could potentially be one to watch because now we are in a run rule situation. Somebody's up by 10 after five or four and a half if the home team is ahead. And that's it, the game is over. Nice libretto. Struck out to end the first. Singleton scored in the first, in the fourth check back. Back to Barrows. Can't find the handle. Base is loaded. And the Philippines potentially in position to close things out right here. Francine Fuentes. Scramble, but nobody's moving. So a couple of errors in this inning for Michigan. Base hit. Nine nothing, the Philippines. And Labrido represents the walk off run. Now it's like the left fielder, number six, Daniela Bejos. Can Bejos knock her in? She walked and scored in the second. Low strike call. Nothing in two. Babrito at third, Fuentes at second, Sarsona at first. Everybody stays. Whistler. That's the count. Stays at one and two. Walk off run at third. Two and two. Mentioned Bejos puts a coin in her pocket for four games. She could be money here. Close one, count full. Strike three call. Work not done yet, though. The bases are still loaded with two out. Another look right at the knees. Now batting number 18, Cassandra Sumatra. Cassandra Sumatra. Sumatra drove in three yesterday. Drove in one in the second inning today. Way one and one. Sumatra is the 10th batter of this inning. Goes right side, it drops down. Labrito scores, and that's it. The run is already scored. And this game is over.
the Philippines in impressive fashion. Do it like they've done it all week it's long. Big time score scoring and even bigger Pacific time 10, pitching. Central and they zero. beat Michigan 10 to nothing Central and finish undefeated in pool play. Asia Erica Arnines allowing just one game. hit in five Tonight innings of work. Striking out 11 more batters. She has struck out 40 so far this week. Once again, turn into the rise ball time and time again with a two strike count. And it just kept right on the work and get Kyle Fox to swing. Van Overloop gets her caught looking. And don't forget that critical sequence in the top half of the fifth inning when Michigan had the bases open and nobody out and didn't score. The Philippines looking like a strong team to this point of this tournament. They, they win 10-0 and they win Pool A. That'll do it for us.